Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It has been a while. I haven't uploaded a video in the whole month of December. I was very busy with uh, my schoolwork from the university. I had a lot of essays that I <laughs> needed to finish up and some other assignments and in the end it was it was just too busy. So now it's the new year. I hope you all had a good first week of the new year. Uh, 2024, <laughs> Year of the Dragon, so I think it should be a good year. And I wanted to close off last year with some books that I really liked. Uh, my favorite <laughs> of books of uh, the whole 2023. I have selected five books, so it's not a lot, so I hope it will be not too long of a video. But yeah, let's just start with the first book. I'm going from five until uh, number one. And number one is obviously my most favorite, so they are this time in a particular order usually i don't make like a order of which one i like the most but this year it just turned out this way so uh, i'm going to start with number five and i have a couple of non-fictions two non-fictions and three fiction books so it's uh i think it's a balanced uh division <laughs> so uh number five is abroad in japan by chris brood maybe you know this book because you're also interested in Japan and you're watching the channel about in Japan. If you don't know it, it's written by Chris Broad, who is hosting this YouTube channel. It, it's his YouTube channel. I don't know if hosting is the right word, but he's the YouTuber behind Abroad in Japan. And he talks about Japan culture. He shows Japan the most beautiful places that, are, that Japan has to offer. Um, but also he makes the commentaries and I really like his content. So when his book came out, I obviously uh, immediately bought it and read it. And it was really, really good. I liked it. It's like a memoir of his 10 years, his first 10 years of living in Japan. So it's obviously non-fiction. It reads like a funny biography. Uh, it does contain some serious subjects, but most of the time it's just a lot of fun and uh, easy to read. And I just enjoyed reading through his stories and um, recognizing some of the things uh, that I also experienced when I was in Japan, but also just just read more about the country that I love. So I would recommend this one to anyone who wants to travel to Japan or has been to Japan. But yeah, this is my number five of the year. I gave it, I think, four or five stars. I don't know, but um, it's a book that really should be on this list. So I really enjoyed it. Then number four is fiction. And it's uh, between science fiction and horror. Um, I do not often read science fiction, actually never, uh, with a couple of exceptions, and this is just one of them. Um, and it's I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. The reason why it's science fiction is because the story takes place in the future, um, where the world is gone, <laughs> like uh, there is an apocalyptic event with vampires. For so far we know there's only one man left, one human. Uh, which is our protagonist, and he uh, is called Robert Nephew. This whole book is about him surviving, but not per se like in the way like we think of like a zombie apocalypse surviving and fighting. There's not a lot of fighting going on. It's more his mental state. So he realizes that he's probably the last person on earth. And uh, what does this mean for him? Like, uh, what is the most important part? So he t first he talks about, of course, food and comfort and he tries out to survive. But then when he has accomplished a lot of things, he has a kind of a safe house. He has enough food. He has enough s stuff <laughs> to survive um, for at least a couple of years. But now what is the next thing that he's really missing? Is it sex? Is it companionship? Is it friendship? Um, a partner that he can trust on? And yeah, it's... It's more a philosophical and psychological thriller than it is like horror or science fiction. So I really enjoyed it. And uh, I just like the philosophical discussions that he had with himself. And one sentence that I really liked is when he's talking about the fact that he's probably the only person left. And at the, in that moment, he thinks, I'm the abnormal one now. Normalcy was a majority concept, the standard of many and not the standard of just one man. Uh, I think that one was really nice, but there are other like interesting dialogues in here. So um, you then, <laughs> so you don't have to be into science fiction or into horror per se to enjoy this book. Uh, so I would definitely recommend it. And then I have another nonfiction, the last one on this list. Uh, it's on anarchism by Noam Chomsky. 
I um, always was interested in anarchism because I'm not into other <laughs> political stances, parties, whatever. I, I actually dislike politics a lot and anarchism was something that I was interested in. So I wanted to know more about it because anarchism has this like uh, bad name of being a violent, uh, lawless state, which it isn't actually true. So Noam Chomsky talks about what anarchism means and what were the examples in our history of anarchism. He talks a lot about the Spanish Civil War and the anarchistic uh, movement during the Civil War. Uh, so you kind of have to have some knowledge about it, which I didn't have. And sometimes it was difficult to follow what he's talking about, but uh, his writing is pretty clear. And he explains some of the concepts and other concepts you can, of course, look up yourself. But I think it's a good book uh, to start to read about anarchism. And uh, I just like Chomsky's writing. He does a lot of this kind of concepts. He has also a book on language. Uh, another book that I'm interested in is on Palestine to know more about the conflict, which is going on now, of course. Um, so he has a lot of books or a lot of subjects that he has written on. And um, this one I read last year really enjoyed it and I think I learned a lot so it's one of my favorite non-fiction books so one sentence that I really like in here or like there's two sentences three sentences uh, one paragraph that I like is uh, the core of anarchist tradition as I understand it is that power is always illegitimate unless it proves itself to be legitimate so the burden of proof is always on those who claim that some authoritarian hierarchic relation is legitimate if they can prove it, then it should be dismantled. I agree. There are a lot of interesting concepts in here, so check it out. Then we're going back to fiction. One of my favorite <laughs> fiction subjects, horror fiction. Again, this is a book that is not uh, exactly classified as horror. The author actually had a very difficult time publishing this book because uh, when he tried to publish it, uh, a lot of ag agencies said that it was too literary to publish under horror uh, and a lot of literary agencies said it was too much horror to publish under literary concept. So it, it, it is in between. For me, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It's my number two on the list and it's The Fisherman by John Langer. I started reading this book without knowing anything about it. Um, a lot of people were talking about it. I had bought it. Then it stayed like a year or so on my shelf. And then I just picked it up and was like, okay, I want something new. I really enjoyed it. It's it's really good. Um, I would describe it like indeed literary horror fiction, which is not a crazy concept because um, I think in Japanese literature, there's a lot of horror concepts in literature. And I think it's quite normal. But uh, here in the West, there's like always um, a battle between literary and horror fiction or science fiction. I think um, horror and science fiction are both interesting concepts that um, sometimes have a place in literature. It's not so, that crazy. So for me, it was literary horror and also dark fantasy and um, kind of an urban legend vibe. So we follow this man who uh, likes fishing. Not because fishing is such a fun activity for him from the start, but because he has a traumatic experience in his life and he picked up fishing to kind of numb his depression. And it works. So he goes on this fishing trips. And then one of his colleagues that he actually don't really speak to and wasn't friends with also experienced something pretty traumatic and uh, uh, gets the depression, of course, and really doesn't know what to do with his life anymore, uh, which is obvious with the circumstances, but <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. So uh, this man, our protagonist, wants to invite the, the colleague to go fishing with him to kind of help him out as well. And eventually this works out. They go together on fishing trips and they kind of start building this relationship, which is really nicely described in here. We we start to care about both uh, like main characters and um, a lot of their details of their life story of their past is in here. Then one day uh, the colleague <laughs> decides that he wants uh, to try out a new fishing spot, which is not on the maps and our protagonists have never um, heard about this place. But he wants to um, uh, be nice and say, of course, we're going to check it out. 
and uh, this place, which is the Dutchman's Creek, I think it's called, um, turns out to have its own story behind it. And then the book gets a little bit uh, complex because we have like a story within a story within a story and we're jumping from one story into the other and they all connected. It's quite um, difficult sometimes to follow in which story you are. So I had some trouble with it, but then in the end it all makes sense. And it gave me a lot of like House of Leaves vibes. It's definitely not the same kind of book, but it, it has something uh, like the House of Leaves. So I really liked it. I think it's a great book. I don't want to spoil the rest of the story, so I'm not going to tell you how it ends and what the fantasy part in it is or the urban legend. But I think all things that John Lennon uh, kind of invented in this book is it, it just works. It works. The story works. Uh, the ending is good, but I especially like like the first part of this book when we get to know the characters and when we get to know their past and when they're going on these fishing trips and when we just see them as two men that try to make something of their life after everything has ended for them. So if you want to check out a horror book that is not like your obvious horror book but well, has a lot of more uh, a deeper meaning to it than uh, definitely this one. And then it's time for the number one, the book that I liked the most of 2023. And it for me, it has to be Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Now, so far I've read a couple of other Bradbury's books and uh, they never disappoint. I really like them, but this one really stood out to me. Probably because it is about books and I really like books about books. Uh, but it's also a philosophical book. Um, it talks about societies and how they function and how people can be manipulated by the government uh, and eventually um, what this leads to. So very interesting, uh, very philosophical to think about. There are a lot of dialogues between the main character and other characters that make yourself think about some certain things. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed a lot of it. The story is about a fireman and it's not the way we know firemen today. Uh, he doesn't help to put out fires, he starts fires, which is of course a pretty weird concept, but he has to burn homes that contain books because in this dystopian society, books are illegal and people only can uh, consume like um, content or entertainment when it is entertaining, when they don't have to think about it, when it gives dopamine and um, doesn't require any thinking. So uh, maybe radio, TV shows, a lot of TV shows um, and comic books are still allowed, but no books, no thinking, no political discussions, uh, no porches. <laughs> you have to figure that one out when you start reading it. There are no porches anymore. So uh, this fireman is working and he's not really questioning uh, the way he's living. Uh, until um, he meets this girl on the street that is his uh, neighbor uh, and they start having these conversations about things that he actually never questioned before. And uh, one day she just disappears and he starts looking for her and realizes that uh, there are a lot of things that just don't make sense to him. And then he starts out to find more and more about the society that he is living in and um, has to make decisions and has to realize for himself what how he wants to go on in in this way that he was currently living. So that's very difficult, especially in his profession. Uh, he's on a, a lot of control, uh, a lot of a lot of pressure. So the story was quite suspenseful. Um, you really go through him in this whole existential crisis that he has. Um, and the ending is quite spectacular. So I would really recommend this book. And again, one sentence or one paragraph that I really liked in here is when he is talking to uh, some men that are also excluded from the society. And one of those men says, everyone must leave something behind when he dies. And my grandfather said, a child or a book or a painting or a house or a wall built or a pair of shoes made or a garden planted, something you hand touched some way so your soul has somewhere to go when you die and when people look at a tree or the flower you planted you're there or another one is when we forget how close the wilderness is in the night my grandpa said someday it will come and get us for we will have forgotten how terrible and real it can be 
So um, this relates to the people that are living in the city and not thinking about nature, not thinking about the things that they should care about. They actually not care about anything since their government doesn't want them to think. They only are entertained and happy. Um, it made me think of that game that I own but never really played. Uh, but it was quite popular a couple of years ago, I think. Uh, we Happy Few. It's about people that are also drugged into thinking that they're happy and um, no discussion can be, of course, uh, uh, discussed between the people. Um, they have to be happy all the time. And also another book that comes to mind is, of course, um, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. So, yeah, a lot of interesting concept is in here as well. And those were all the books that I really enjoyed in 2023. And I have three more honorable mentions. I'm going really quickly through them. So the first honorable mention is Why I Write by George Orwell. And um, it, these are uh, essays, I think five or four essays. And the first essay is also called Why I Write, uh, four essays. So I picked this book up because I wanted to have some tips on writing from George Orwell because I like his writing and also just I like reading essays but it's also a lot about politics which I don't really like but I think George Orwell is also good and, uh, and clear at explaining uh, the political concept that he's mentioning mostly it's about the British politics before World War II and how World War II um, was able to be what it was so big and what Britain's role, role was in it uh, so he talks a lot about it and the reason why he goes into politics is because he thinks that or his opinion is that uh, writing has also a very important part in politics, which I agree with. But also for him, writing is necessary when there's something to write about that he wants to change um, or that he's not agreeing with. So even fiction. When he's writing fiction, he think he's thinking about uh, concepts that we have in our world right now that he would like to change. So that was one was very interesting. And I think in the last essay, he's talking about style and uh, the English language and also about politics, but um, especially about the English language as it is, uh, as it is used. He gives uh, a couple of tips that are, I think, good for all writers. But one of his tips, I think, is very important when he says uh, you have to write clearly and as easy as possible. You don't have to use uh, difficult words or just invent words in your uh, text just to make yourself sound intelligent because it doesn't make your writing intelligent. It just makes it difficult and uh, your point that you want to make clear is not clear anymore. So you kind of lose the meaning behind your sentence. So if you can write it in normal language, write it in normal language. And especially he's talking, I think, about uh, scientific uh, articles, which sometimes use <laughs> like ridiculous words to describe some concepts, uh, which only makes the article difficult. Uh, but also about other literary works, um, he gives a lot of examples. So really interesting. Um, but I didn't include it in my top five because I already had one political book so uh, and two non-fiction books in total. So that's why it's an honorable mention. Then a book which is a classic that I also really liked is A Picture of Dorian Gray uh, by Oscar Wilde. Uh, this was the first time that I read it. I wanted to read it for a long time. And obviously I enjoyed it. The writing is good. The story is interesting. Uh, the characters are very vivid and character of Dorian Gray is very important but also his friends, uh, the two friends, one painter and one aristocrat. I really like the, the dynamics between them. So this is the censored edition. I also own the uncensored edition which is published later and I want to read that one as well and I think I'm going to read it for October this year. So who knows but I really like this one. And lastly uh, Orlando by Virginia Woolf. This one also got five stars for me, but not per se because of the plot of the story, but because of their writing style. Uh, it's very different from what I read before in my other books. <laughs> so this was the first book that I read from Virginia Woolf. And uh, this like strain of thought that he's like the way she's writing really makes you see the ideas and the mind of the character of Orlando. So I really like that way of writing. Uh, sometimes it was a little bit difficult to follow in which like 
year we were at because the time just flies by and then she goes back uh, into the past and then in the end you actually don't know in which time period you are at the moment um, which is also interesting which also adds up to this like uh, hallucinogenic effect of the book um, so yeah check this one out it's not easy to read but um, it's worth it those were all of the books um, I'm glad that I didn't make too long of a list because I always talk too much about the book, so it's still going to be a long video. In the next video, I probably will tell you what I read in November and December, or I will um, talk about my reading goals for this year. So yeah, expect one of these two videos um, in the near future. And I try to pick up YouTube again in January and just uh, try to post one video a week. At least I will try. And if you want to know what I'm reading, you can always follow me on Goodreads. There it's always up to date what I'm reading at the, currently at the moment. And also I have a blog on Medium and on my own website. You can find those in the description down below uh, to see which books I review. Uh, all of the lists of books that I want to read, it's all in there. And also things for language learning uh, because my channel is also about language learning. Uh, so my goals or the resources that I use, you can always find it on my blog. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you also had a wonderful reading year in 2023. I know it wasn't an easy year to live in, but uh, I think books are a great escape for what's happening in the world. So um, read a lot and let me know in the comments what your favorite book was. It could be multiple books, it could be one book you could choose. Um, but let me know what you were reading and what you really loved. So thank you so much and I will see you next time. Goodbye.